Lord is good. And all the time. Immortal. Invisible. God only wise. Enlighten us. began this year's DIFCON. Thank you, all, Father, for all the ministers of the gospel that you have used to bless us. To you alone, our Father, be all the glory. In the name of Jesus, you are the Lord. That is your name and your glory we will not share with any man. You are not elected, you are not selected, you are not appointed, you are not nominated. And your position can never be contested. Be glorified, our Father. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Give the Lord a clap offering. And make a joyful noise unto God.
Please be seated. We appreciate the privilege to bring the word of God this morning. And we appreciate our primates and Mama Nigeria for this great opportunity. And we also appreciate the planning committee of DIFCON. The knowledge of God is the escape from shame and reproach. Paul speaking, he said, study, study, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if you don't want to end up as a victim of shame, study. Study. Today we are rounding up our teaching on the subject be resolute, never bow, on page 14, be resolute, never bow, Daniel chapter 1, we are reading from verse 8, Daniel proposed in his heart, that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuch that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who had appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melza, whom the prince of the eunuch had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servant, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servant. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. And at the end of the ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus, males that took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. In our study today, I would like us to know that there is a high level of conformity to the standards of the world. A high level of conformity to the patterns of the world. 
So you come to the church, the church is also doing the things the world is doing. There is a high level of conformity to the standards of the world. World here does not refer, refer to cosmos, but the human society as it organizes itself against God. Without missing words, compromise is almost becoming a norm and the order of the day. This morning I make bold to say that there is a very thin line between the sacred and the profane. There is a very thin line between the unbelievers and the believers. There is a very thin line to those who call themselves children of God and those who have already surrendered themselves to the devil. One can hardly differentiate the sacred from the profane, all because of conformity or what I call similarities in habits. Today, both the sacred and the profane all tell lies. Today, both the believers and the unbelievers dress in the same seductive fashion. And sometimes I wonder what is wrong with the women of our days. You are always wearing things that is putting you under pressure. All the clothes is putting them under pressure. And as a born again child of God, you don't want to see anything. The woman will force you to see it. So I don't know in our age and time whether we should be closing our eyes before we can walk on the street. So both the believers and the unbelievers dress in the same seductive fashion. When you see a girl going to church, you wonder whether she's going for club. Both the profane and the sacred, the believers and the unbelievers, they all cheat in examination. But the believers, now today in our age and time, the, in fact, even when you don't want to teach, uh, to cheat, the, the, the invigilators will force you people to cheat. Because he wants to collect some bribe before going back. And on Sunday, that believer will appear in the church as an elder. Both the profane and the sacred, the believers and the unbelievers, forge documents. Some of us are walking with forged documents. Today, both the believers and the unbelievers give false declaration of age. False Declaration of age. 
do you know for forging your age, you will go to hell? Believers do the same. The unbelievers do the same. The clergy do the same. The laity do the same. The unbelievers are pursuing women. The believers are also pursuing women. The unbelievers are pursuing men. And the believers are also pursuing, they are going after men. Similarities in habits. Beloved, that the world is doing it does not make it right. Like I told people that it is white does not make it right. Because even white people also tell lies. That the world is doing it does not make it right. That your pastor is doing it does not make it right. That your spiritual father is doing it does not make it right. The standard of God remains sure. The principles of God remains sure. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 19, the Bible said, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth those them that are his, and let him that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The principles of God cannot be changed to suit a compromised believer. He said, for I am the Lord, I change not. That's why ye seed of Jacob are not consumed. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forever. His principles cannot be changed to suit a compromised believer. But there are certain times we have to change some certain things so that we can buy our way out of it. You go to the Nigerian government, they change a lot of things. You come to the church, they change a lot of things. Just to buy their way out. Sir, all the believers need to do is to come out of the world system to live the life of righteousness. Come out of the world system to live the life of righteousness. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, is here, wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Say at the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and God in heaven will receive you. Come out from among them. There can be no distinction without separation. Conformity is the reason for uniformity in calamity. Why do we die like unbelievers? Conformity. Why do we experience what unbelievers experience? Conformity. Is the reason for the uniformity in calamity. 
Conformity is the uniformity in calamity. For as long as you are not different from them, your destiny cannot be different from them. For as long as you are not different from them. I said here, to be like the rest is to die like the rest. Every child of God must be different. If you are like the rest, you will die like the rest. So until your nature is different, your future can never be different. When we went to write Wayak many years ago, we were seven, seven living in a room. And six of those people that we were living with, they had one particular girl that they were sleeping with. Six of them had slept with her. I was the only one left. So one of those days I came to that room and then I met one sleeping with the girl. I went and carried the girl the way she, she was. I brought her outside. And then I told her, the figure down Ubanki. I told myself, the day I will sleep with a woman that is not my wife, may I die on top of that woman. If you live like, like the rest, you will experience the same thing others are experiencing. And one of those days, I went to Port Harcourt because when I went on transfer, I was sent to a station where we traveled for like 10 hours in the same stage because of the nature of the road. My, the vicarage where I was staying was very bad. But while we were still in our secondary school days, there was this girl I used to preach to. The way you are living your life, be very careful with it. And then she would look at me and say, get out from here, you this Jew boy. People are enjoying their, their youthful age. You are busy messing up with your youthful age. So I was transferred to a station where they were paying me 5,500 naira per month. And I went to Port Harcourt. I met inside the bus. I was inside the bus. The bus was moving. And all of a sudden, I discovered that the girl that I used to preach to, she was inside the bus also. So we got to a particular junction. We all came down. And then she was so excited to see me. She gave me a card that I should see her in her office the following day. I went to her office. Oh, beautiful. AC everywhere. She was operating internet like, like nothing, like water. That time they were paying a huge amount of money. She was working in an oil company. If she calculated her entire salary for, for, for that for a month, this girl was earning up to one million naira every month. And I was being paid 5,500 naira every month. But she told me a story. She said, you used to preach to me in those days and I refused to answer. He said, but today I am a victim of HIV AIDS. If I had listened to you, if this girl were to be alive, I believe by now she should be earning more than six million naira every month. But today, dead, buried, and forgotten. There are so much, so much, so many of my of those those who were seven, six today are nowhere to be found. To be like the rest is to die like the rest. Until your nature is different, your future can never be different. I suppose 
that it was in the light of the above that Apostle Paul cancelled as follows. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. And then he said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Christians must be battle ready to guard against the monster called conformity or compromise. It is a fight. It is a war. You know, when you are reading newspaper, you don't sleep. But the moment you carry the Bible to read, sleep will start coming. It is a war, sir. The Bible said the God of this world had blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the lights of the gospel of Christ, which is the express image of God, should shine unto them. Anything that will help your spirituality, the devil is against it. Anything that will help you to live a righteous life, the devil is always against it. So Christians must be battle ready to guard against the monster called conformity or compromise. Conformity or compromise. Why should you call yourself a man of God and you are busy going after other people's wives? Why should you call yourself a woman of God And you are busy going after other people's husband. All this title that we are bragging with today, we will stand before our maker tomorrow. I am the bishop of my diocese. Don't worry. One day you will stand before the bishop of your soul. I am the archdeacon. In this archdeaconry, and you are behaving like an archdemon. I am a canon in my parish, and you are behaving like a carton, 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 Funko. It is better you go to the farm than to be messing up with women in the church. It is better you are not called than for you to be called and be laying a wrong example for the body of Christ. On that day, the Bible said, there shall be weeping and there shall be gnashing of teeth. They are tying things on their waist for protection. And you, a man of God, you are also tying something on your waist for protection. They go to the same harbourless, and you are also going to the same harbourless to go and tell you what. They steal money in the government, and you are stealing money in the church. Between you and them, which one is better?
When I was serving as a chaplain in a particular place, let me not call it because we are, we are on live television. The chief usher gave tithes of 25,000 naira inside an envelope. When they were counting the money, because the chief usher, now you should know, they counted and counted, and the money that one he gave was not there. So he said, everybody should stand up. All of you that is counting the money, stand up and come this way. They all went the other way. So he started searching their pocket. Then he saw the money with the envelope inside the pocket of one of them. But that was not the annoying part. The one he saw the money inside his pocket was the one that approached me that he wants to become a minister of the gospel of Christ. Then that means the church money is not safe. Somebody stole church money and they were saying, where is the money? He said, rat ate the whole money. If sin has affected your mentality, it has not affected other people's mentality. We must guard against the master called conformity or compromise. We must guard against hypocrisy. When your leader appears, it's as if you are with him. But the moment he's not there, you start raining insult on him. We must guard against it. It is better I am not called than to be called and mess up in ministry. It is only being on our guard against conformity that we can guarantee our firm stand in the face. Without which we risk being tossed back and fought by every wave of deceitful men. Deceitful men. Deceitful men. They are all over in the body of Christ. And you know one funny thing about us? We are busy looking at other people outside, whereas the things we are doing is worse than the one we are looking at. Brothers and sisters, it takes a man or woman, boy or girl, who is resolute in the faith to fight to the end. Resolute in the faith to fight till the end. It takes a man, a woman, a boy, a girl who is resolute in the faith to fight till the end. Oh, I remember one of our brothers by the name Joshua. He came to Taraba State to serve as a youth copper. After his service, he went into a village and began a ministry there. And God started blessing this young boy. He will go out and bring money and impact on that city. He has about 500 children that he was training in the school. He built a school there in that village. Dog bore hole in that village and was accommodating these 500 children and feeding them every day. One day he went for his wife's graduation in Lagos and was on his way coming back. When he came to one particular area we call Wukari, in front of Wukari, his vehicle had a problem. And then he called on his mechanic to come so that an assist to fix the car for him. Before the arrival of the mechanic, he saw the dead body of that man. They cut off his, remove his eyes, remove his private part, remove some sensitive things in his body. It was a great disaster to Taraba State as a whole because all of us, we know the boy. But on the day of the barrier, the wife stood up and said, this work that my husband began 
will not stop halfway. I will enter, I will take the place of my husband. Today, that work is still ongoing. If you want to clap, you better clap. It takes a man or a woman, boy or girl, who is resolute in the faith to fight till the end. In our area, Fulani Hesman will come and burn the church, destroy the entire place. Tomorrow, the members will call you and say, Pastor, we are back. We are back. Let's continue with this church. This work that we began here will not die. We are back. We are back. They destroyed one about last, uh, last month. And then this month, they called me and said, we are around, sir. We are around. Let's build this church again so that we can continue to serve our God. We are living in an environment where when you are going to a church, you don't know whether you will return back home. When you are traveling as a bishop for confirmation, you don't know whether you will return back home. And the work is still ongoing. The church of God is marching on, sir. The gate of hell shall not prevail against it. So even in the face of adversity, we must be resolute. What does it mean to be resolute? It means to be firm in purpose or belief. In unhesitating, to be firm in purpose or belief, unhesitating, even in the face of adversity, we are called to be firm in purpose and belief. We are called to be unhesitating in our belief and in, our, in the purpose of God for our lives. When adversity came the way of Job, the Bible said he refused to surrender. He refused to surrender his conviction to his condition. He remains firm to what he believes. Hear what Job said in Job chapter 13 verse 15. He said, even if he slay me, I will trust him. Even if he slay me, I will trust him. He woke up one morning to discover that his children died, business dead. He also lost his wife because if you get to a point where your wife will tell you, why not curse God and die? You have lost her completely. Afflicted with boils. And the man stood up and said, even if he slay me, <laughs> I would trust him. I will maintain my own ways before him. Adversity came to shake Job's faith and confidence in God. But Job remained firm to what he believes. In Job chapter 14 verse 14, he said, if a man die, shall he live again all the days of my appointed time? I will wait till my change comes. That means no matter what happens to me, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change comes. Friends, most people serve God when the going is well. But only few remain committed 
in the face of adversity. When the going is well, they serve God. When they are face to face with adversity, they chicken out. But for Job, no way. Somebody say no way. No way. No way. I love what Job said. In Job chapter 27, verses 1 to 6, he said, Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, As God liveth, somebody say, As God liveth. Please, if you will forget anything, don't forget this Bible passage. He said, As God liveth. All right. As God liveth, who had taken away my judgment. And the Almighty who has vest my soul all the while my breath is in me and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. Then Job said, My lips shall not speak wickedness nor my tongue utter deceit. God forbid that I should justify you till I die. I will not remove my integrity from me. Verse 6, he said, my righteousness I hold fast and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. My mouth shall not utter deceit. There are deceivers everywhere. My tongue shall not speak wickedness. Anybody can serve God at ordinary times. But it is in adversity that your commitment to God is confirmed. It is in adversity that your commitment to God is confirmed. The world we live in is allergic to inconvenience and addicted to pleasure. When there is pleasure, the world is after it. When there is inconvenience, the world will run away from it. Sir, but it is in inconvenience that your commitment to God is confirmed. It is in affliction that your commitment to God is confirmed. They said to the disciples of Jesus, don't mention the name of Jesus anymore in Jerusalem. Peter said, ah, you have touched the sensitive part. He said, we don't know your conclusion, but this is our conclusion. We cannot but speak the things we have heard. We cannot but speak the things we have seen. And we cannot but speak about the things our hands have handled about the things of life. We have heard him talk to us. You can't stop us from telling other people about him. We have seen him face to face. You can't stop us from showing him to others. We have handled the things of life. Sir, anybody that is living without Christ is living in crisis. How can you tell us to abandon the things we have handled? No way. I had a story from Archbishop Benjamin Kwashi that the white people that came to Joss, Plateau State, there are two of them that died because of malaria. When they took the report to their parents, your both children are dead. The parents, instead of them to cry, they went and sold their land, sold their property, gathered the money and brought it to the people and said, the only thing that will console us 
is for you to continue from where our children stop. That is our consolation. But today we are having believers who are just after what God can give them and not after their commitment to God. Seek first, sir, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, sir, that others are dying to get, it shall be added unto you. The psalmist stood up, he said, as the water, higher, as the water panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. My soul tasted for thee. When shall I appear before thee, O my God? So God motivated, God focused. Anything that pleases God, pleases the psalmist. Don't mention God again. Peter said, you have touched the main thing. Jesus is the main thing. I am here to announce to you, if you don't have Jesus, you are old school. Old school. Old school. Jesus is the reigning thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Old school, that is what you are. Jesus is the reigning thing. So the world is allergic to inconvenience. Our youth are allergic to inconvenience. You don't want to get it the hard way. You want to get it the easier way. It doesn't work like that. Somebody met me and said, how did you become a bishop at this age? I said, when you were eating aku, I was praying. Praise God. But beside that, the grace of God. Somebody say the grace of God. There was a time we climbed on top of the mountain and we were there for, for three nights. What were we doing? Seeking the face of God. When we got there, with that my pastor friend, rain, rain came. We say, God, if you are the one that brought us here, let the rain stop. The rain came more. So I had to look for nylon. Thank God we went to the nylon. My Bible was inside. Pray, pray, and pray. On the last day, I had no strength to come down from the mountain. At some point, I was using my buttocks to come down from the mountain. But... Sir, I contacted something that is keeping me till today. That is the encounter that I will never forget in my life till Jesus comes. I encountered something that is keeping me till today. If the only thing you are banking on is the theology that you went and you are hitting yourself up and down, if that is the only thing you are banking on, you will end up confusing the people and not helping the people. I am not against study. I am not against theology. But sir, any theol anything you do without this encounter with God. Don't be going after pleasure. Go after inconvenience. And you will enjoy the remaining days of your life. So be resolute. To be resolute means to be firm in purpose or belief, unhesitating. This description suits Daniel as seen in our text for today. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself in these days. Because he saw them presenting the food to their idol before presenting it to 
to the king. He said, please, I don't want to be part of it. I don't want to be part of it. I don't want to be a part of any generation that will bring the name of Christ down. I don't want to be part of it. So he proposed in his heart that he will not eat from the king's delicacies. From the above scripture passage, we saw that Daniel was not moved or enticed by the aroma and whatever of the king's food and drink. Daniel was able to stand firm in this matter because he understood his identity and that he had resolved in his heart never to get entangled. It has to come from the heart. Anything you do that is not coming from the heart, you can't give it the best approach. He proposed in his heart that he will not entangle with any nonsense. Anything that will defile his spirit man, he proposed in his heart that he will not entangle with it. In other words, Daniel was resolute and as he resolved, he never bowed to pressure and fear if what his refusal might cause him. Even if his refusal will cost him his life, the guy refused to bow. Daniel again refused to bow to pressure when a decree was passed to the effect that nobody should pray to any other God or person except the God of the king for the next 30 days. The moment Daniel had that declaration, the Bible said Daniel went and opened his windows and lifted up his voice three times daily praying to the almighty God. They came and met him. Daniel, what are you doing? Daniel said, I am praying. I am not meditating. Do your worst. If this commitment is to God, do your worst. He was fully aware of the decree. But when he had it, he opened his windows. Three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. The aforesaid Daniel was able to do irrespective of the grave consequences of disobedience to the king's decree because he was resolute to serve only the living God and not to bow to any other God or man. When Boko Haram invaded Mubi, there is this, our father, one of our fathers, it's a military man. They came, people were running away, the man refused to run away. They caught the man and caught some Christians. And they said all of them should kneel down. And denounce Jesus or else they will cut off their neck. They met one, the other and said, please, Jesus, I denounce you. He went the other way. Another one, Jesus, I denounce you, he went the other way. When they came to this man, the man laughed. He said, I was not afraid to go to Liberia. I was not afraid to go to Syria alone. Even when they sent me to Afghanistan as a military, military man, I was not afraid. So why should I be afraid of these small, small boys? Is it because of the knife and the gun that you are carrying that you are asking me to denounce my Jesus? It was the people that came after, that experienced it, that came and were telling the story. The man said, here is my neck. Not film, sir. Oh, Baba Yuba. They cut off his neck that day. He is not with us here on the earth, but I believe he is with, he is with God in heaven. It 
Is somebody hearing what God is saying today? Daniel despised the decree and continued praying. And so they cast him into the lion's den. But God preserved him. God preserved him. To some they were preserved, to some they were not preserved. But for Daniel, God preserved him. We were told early in the morning the king came to the lion's den and cried and said, O oh Daniel, servant of the living God, has thy God, whom thou servest, able to deliver thee from the lion's mouth? Expecting not to hear anything, then he heard from a voice from the lion's den saying, My God has shut up the mouth of the lions because innocency was found in me. Because Daniel was preserved, I decree to you this morning, you will also be preserved. <laughs> that your amen does not show you are the one God is talking to. In the face of persecution, my God, your God will preserve you in the name of Jesus. That your amen does not show you are the one the king of kings is talking to. <laughs> Questions for discussion. <laughs> Number one, what are some of the reasons or things we fear so much and even make us to withdraw from our responsibilities? as Christians in our world today. Suffering calamity because of our Christianity. Poverty. Just to portray the first point, you know, even in our country today, some people are changing their names now. Just to get a job. The next one is poverty. 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 Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, fear, of fear of death. Fear of death. Nobody wants to. Answer me now. Nobody wants to. Nobody wants to die. Bless you. Is somebody blessed this morning? The way and manner Christians behave today appears to be different from what we have read from the scriptures about the saints of old. It appears we are serving a different God from the one they served. Certain things we do suggest this to me. While the saints of old were ready to go to any length, wait and die for God, we are never ready to go and die for God. For us to be able to convince the world that our God lives and that there is afterlife somewhere, we must come all out, stand firm in the faith, show forth great courage in the midst of so many discouragement and be ready to die for him who laid down his life for us. This is the word of the Lord.